you will listen to and allow it affect how you judge from here that you will let the hand of god be upon your heart with what you will listen to when we hear the word of god it's not supposed to leave you the same yes, sir. however what it can do is tied to what you do with it so that the word of god is powerful does not mean you will be powerful it has everything to do with what you do with it and i want you to know that you are in a very great meeting yes, sir. any meeting where god is present is a great meeting yes, sir. i'm not it is, is i don't need to convince you too hard to remember that the bible says that wherever two or more are gathered i am there yes, he didn't send a deputy god mm. he is here with us mm. and i want us to be to, to be sensitive to what we want to learn let me do some disclaimers or some preamble in the advent of the new or the introduction of the new does not automatically expire the old so every new knowledge you garner does not automatically displace that the old is irrelevant mm. so for example some of the things i'll be sharing tonight may be a little different somehow somewhere from what you may have known as it is commonly accepted as the spirit of god's movements the life of god it doesn't displace it neither does it make you not desire ministry as a person i'm seeking to teach what god has taught me yes, sir. Yes, sir. and today when i was having um is it when i was breaking my fast this after lunch that's lunch yeah the spirit of god said to me make sure that whatever you are teaching that i've taught you does not undermine the previous knowledge i had him say so to me i was eating and i had him say make sure you don't undermine other things that have been before now for example the move of the spirit requires you know being slain under the anointing or falling under the power or staying in the place of prayer desiring revival I want you to note that anything i'm teaching by any chance in an attempt to emphasize what i'm saying that downscales the importance of previous knowledge is not intentional but i am speaking to the things that i believe god will have me teach and i want to say it requires some measure of boldness to say the things i'll be saying tonight i'm not going to be looking at faces I'm not going to be afraid to say what I'm saying, but I'm going to speak as one who has been sent. Yes, and I just want you to listen yes, and go back home and check if what I've said is true. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God took away our sins, not our brains. So I'm not stopping you from checking what I've said. Go back and check. Just check and see if your spirit man aligns with it. If you have any question, please i'll be very happy to explain further to you so don't say, sit down there and just think that i pastor just thought it don't take my word absolutely especially this teaching like go and check because i'll be saying something not as if you may not have heard them before but i might be changing how you see some things let me also say that it is god's will that some of us respond to ministry it is the will of God that some of us accept ministry. Some of you here, before you came to this ministry, God had impressed it in your heart or your parents' hearts that you, are, you have a calling on your life. I'm not the one that said it to you. So you are only coming to this church to learn of God, to serve God, and hopefully to find the opportunity to give expression to your ministry. I have a duty, oh, let me just tell all of you. If you are in such category, I have a duty to make sure that your life finds expression. Yes, sir. And I know some of you, some of you are in Young Ministers Forum already. 
some of you have not joined Young Ministers Forum, but you know that there's something on your life. I'm going to use you in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. I keep saying it. The only reason why anybody will use you is because you are useful. Don't feel bad anybody is using your usefulness. Nobody will force your usefulness on you. It's that you are useful, we are using you. And we are grateful before you get angry. We are grateful up front. Praise the Lord. But really and truly, you should be more grateful. Yes, sir. Because there's nothing as painful as being useful and being useless. When nobody appreciates your value, you know you have value, but nobody sees it. It's called social undermining. When people undermine you in the office, have you seen it before? When they notice your email, they skip your email, and then they go to the other. <laughs> Some of you know what I'm saying better than others. Maybe you are chatting in a group. They skip your, your own and go to somebody else. I like this. Like you never were there. It's called social undermining. And many times, it happens like it's a natural thing, like the person skipped it. Whether well, deliberate or not deliberate, as far as I'm concerned, it's deliberate. Because my post was in capital, if I wrote all capital letter, you did not see it. But what they are saying is that you are not, we don't have answer to your, to your point. It might be of two things. Either you are higher than them, or you are not in their own eye. And all of those things happen you may think in your heart that is just a natural thing. Yes, I agree, like I said on Sunday, some things are natural. But some things are also spiritual. It will take a lot of scientific probability to convince me that some of those things are just arbitrary. No. I want you to please listen to what I want to share tonight. And I pray that as we join in the word, just listen. Just listen, open your heart, and let it refresh your spirit. I promised on Sunday that I will continue what I was teaching. And I was trying to say on Sunday about the intelligence a Christian needs. That you need to know when things are in the natural occurrence from when they are spiritual. It is, it is wrong to think everything is spiritual. It's not true. This, my shoe, is not spiritual, sir. This pulpit, to prove it's not, if I use it on your head, you will, know, you will know it's not spiritual. So to say everything is spiritual is to misplace a reality. To say everything is physical also is not to be, you are not learned. Uh -huh. So some th sometimes when people don't know how to, they say what people don't understand, they mystify. When they don't understand, they just mystify it. Or now we'll go pray. Sometimes you just need to be able to. Sometimes you just need to sleep over the matter. Why am I saying so? Please listen. One of the reasons why that theory or this theory I'm saying is important is to let you know by the innermost riches of you being human, you are very powerful. And I used a statement on Sunday that I thought could be misunderstood. And I, I will still use it now, but I will try to explain myself better. By saying that it will seem to me that there is a, an, an exaggerated perception of God and an underrated relevance of man in the activities of life. I, 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 I know what I'm saying. It will seem like people think that God is more powerful than he really is in our reality. That does not undermine God's power. It's just that God does not get involved at every beck and call. He's not involved at every point in time. And I said something that the more you say God is in control, God is in control, God knows to it, you are indicting God's sense of responsibility. Because if God is in control and things are like this, then he's a very irresponsible God. And so in the sincerity of wanting to yield everything we don't understand to the almighty divine, 
we miss the chance to take responsibility of what he has committed to us. Yes, in Psalm 115, I showed it to you on scripture, verse 14 to 16. The word of God says in verse 16, he says the heavens, he says the heavens, the highest heavens belongs to God. Yes, but that the earth, so this earth, he has given to the sons, sons of, of men. Psalm 115 verse 16. Let's read it. The, the heaven, heavens, even the heavens, are the, the Lord's. And we're balloon. We're not arguing with you, Lord. But this earth, He has given to the children of. I want to ask you a question. I was using the illustration at home. My landlord, who owns the house, that I paid the rent. In fact, let's assume he even gave me the house to be living in for free. The owner of the house, he cannot walk into my house without my permission. Yes. Yes. Just imagine, that. I'm the owner of the house. I'm, I build the house now. I build the house. Just enter my bedroom. Even if it's for free, I will sue you to court. Yes, That's, I'm living for free. Hmm. He can't do that. I, I, I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say here. You can't. It's not because hey, I'm very powerful or he's not powerful. There, is, there are boundaries there. You gave me the. If, I mean, anybody that gives and still money, give, he, he has not given you. Yeah. I'm not the one that wrote Bible. He gave giving. It let, it, you see, and this thing has affected how believers live the quality of their lives. Aye. That they pass on to God what God has passed on to them. Aye. God has passed the tenancy of this earth to you. He said, The earth is the Lord and the fullness of We agree. He now tells us updates. I have given this earth to, to the children of men. So in this world of men, men are the gods. If I need my landlord to do anything in my house, I need to invite him. Aye. If you want God to do anything on this earth, you need to invite him. That's why he's not involved in everything. It is our invitation through prayer that makes him relevant. Aye. And then when he comes... And then what you call him for is to come and help you pick your remotes. <laughs> you know, you, you call your child, come, come, come and pick this remote. Out. You undermine the God. That is how sincerely irresponsible a lot of believers are. And I use the word most respectfully. Sincerely, they pass everything that the human power could have achieved to the divine power. Divine power is not to achieve my my things. Yes, divine power is to achieve big big things. Yes, so that's why at some point our theology fails us because we can we cannot explain why some people don't have this God and are getting the result we want to use our God for. Yes, sir. Hey. Uh, he has not fasted, not prayed, but he has the results. Because in the world of men. Men are the gods. Yes, sir. Hey. <laughs> Does this now undermine my master, my king, my makers? No. no sir. It yes, just sir. means I need to invite him mm. into the one that concerns him. Yes, sir. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because yes, yes, somehow we just mix everything up. And at some point, there is this, uh, what they call this thing, when you recline or, you know, just give everything and say oh, god knows everything he knows and he's looking at you that what's wrong with this one and, and and sincerely we misrepresent god in his dna by the way we respond to challenges of life i'm still on earth and i said on sunday <laughs> with all due respect nobody has lived this life anybody that is alive that is still talking and breathing is still trusting god for mercy <laughs> Hello. Yes, sir. I don't mean that wrong. Hey, if you can be briefing, we are all in the Lord's book of mercy, Lord. We are all in the Lord's book of grace, Lord. We might not be at the same level, but we are all inside. Yes, sir. Why am I bringing this to our attention? Because I want to lay this message on as a theory that I want our church to be guided by. Are you listening to what I'm yes, saying? Yes, sir. To understand the role of God in our affairs 
and to understand our responsibility and kill another person and the person will not die. Okay, look at the first murderer that is documented. Cain in the Bible. He killed his brother. God said, why did you kill your brother? He said, Lord, just leave that matter. It doesn't concern you. God was asking, where is your brother? He, stood, he was asking God, am I my brother's keeper? As if God did not know what he had done. <laughs> Do you understand? Mm. And then God said, Kai, what you have done is very bad. Because the blood of Abel was speaking from the grave. And was crying for vengeance. And then God said, Kai, you can't stay in this land. Though. You are going to go on exile. Talking to Cain. And so Cain got up and was on exile. For real. And then Cain's exile was going. And then he said people were trying to kill him. And then he turned to the God that watched him kill his brother. And said, this punishment is too hard for me. He was negotiating with that God. And God now said, ah, okay, anyone that tries to kill you, I will kill you. Don't worry. Somewhere in my mind, I'm like, ah. Uluami. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I, mean. I don't get this thing so there's this life that I think Christians think is the life of God that is not consistent with what I read in the Bible and for the fear of being compliant with what we've always known a generation will soon rise that many ministers of God will not have answers for Unless they have men of God like me, yes, sir. I will match you for the controversy. I did not know God was taking me through to learning it. It's now I'm seeing them come up. I'm like, I was prepared for this. I can see this. It's like I can now understand what I was learning then. I did not know. It's not as if I went to go and deliberately develop. No. I was just studying. I said, ah, this thing is like this. So I'll just mark it. You know, that kind of thing. Mark it in my Bible. Mark it, mark it. Ah, this thing I'll write inside my Bible. This is the result for that controversy. <laughs> you know, I did not know the day will come when it becomes. But I tell you, give it five, ten years, fifteen years from now, a generation is asking questions that if we don't have profound answers for, we will lose another generation. But the Lord will show mercy. Amen. So let's begin tonight's conversation and title it. I'm talking about systems thinking. Hmm. Systems thinking. If you are at the UK, yes, is that me? No. Okay. Yeah. You know, you'd have heard a bit of this. And I just want to try tonight to um, bring it up again. You know, at that meeting, with what I've just shared with you, I was saying that there are things that concerns God. There's some things that does not concern God. For example, somebody is trusting God for a child. It can be both natural and spiritual. It can be both. It can be singular. It can be. It can be any of them. And that's why I said you need. So believers sometimes in an attempt to we don't know which one is working. They will use the blood of Jesus plus the planter of the name. Then we we'll layer it with communion bread then we laser it with worship then after a while we enter prophetic seed and just roll everything do you, do you get what i'm saying you have a challenge of academics and the lecturer i want to sleep with you or if he's not sleeping with you he wants to just buga you you know what i mean <laughs> and you as a believing believer they ask you that you should either consecrate your girlfriend or your babe you know thank god to these are young ministers that are coming up these days the theophilus sings <laughs> that, that, that is going on. so you have all those type of situations coming up and then the lecturer says no and then you take it that the lecturer is joking. Then you enter exam hall and he tells you I was not joking. 
that he has marked your scripts. That not, there's nothing you will write. As long as it's a life, oh, that you pass. Except either you are getting it. That on this earth, oh, uh -huh. <coughs> excuse me, please. So there is this understanding I seek to portend. That is that you must know when the activities of your life or your environment are within natural sphere. For example, it's natural that a man should like a woman. Abi? Yes, now. It's natural. But there's a liking that is not natural. That you will see that this one is abnormal. And if you have the spirit of God in you, it's your job to decipher. This one oh, is not normal. There are things like that. So we cannot be, we can't lose God. We can't lose God. We can't lose God. You are dating your wife or you are married or you are dating your spouse, I mean to say, or your lover or whatever it is, and you are losing God. You can't lose God. You can't lose God. Perpetual vigilance is the price for perpetual safety. You can't lose God. Just the body wave, vroom, things could have changed. Just, just, vroom. something. The person that looked at you like this, by the time you look back, something could have changed. Mm. If you watch the Matrix, you'd understand what yes, I just sir. said. Yes, <laughs> and that's why I used to like, because a church that the people films and the people will be dull, small. Mm. So be watching films. Because, because illustrations will be hard to achieve. Mm. Mm -hmm. So there's this vigilance that should come, not by being afraid, but by being vigilant. Being vigilant. The Bible tells us that we should be vigilant because sometimes we receive guests that are angels without knowing. The Bible says that in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 2. It said, be vigilant, be hospitable, don't lose it, let brother love continue. He said, because some of you have received angels without knowing. So that person just said, ah, wait, 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 sit down like this, was an angel that came to mark you. Check your character conduct to confirm to heaven that all is true. That means we need to appreciate the life of God in us and how it correlates with everything we do. If you look at films today, real good films, eh? even computer games, most of them have adopted or introduced a supernatural dimension to their scripting. Most of them. Anyone that will really engage you has to have a supernatural dimension. So when I say supernatural, something that is mystical, you know, something come out of the eye you know uh, the beginning of that this trend for me was x-men x-men one if you don't watch this just go and check you know you mean you miss a class in childhood if you do if, let me just say go and check it again x-men all those things if you did not work any that, that's why for me some positives were in those children cartoons that seem to give us a feeling of being heroes you know, yes, sir, Super yes, Ted, yes, Voltron, you know, yes, I don't know, today now is Omnitrix, uh, Avatar, you know, all those things sell an idea. If none of them resonated within you, your environment did not facilitate greatness. Mm. I'm telling you, the they were supposed to have made you feel something special about you. Mm. If that feeling was not sold to you from childhood, you will struggle to feel special in adulthood. Mm. Yes. So somehow, whatever we are preaching is not our fault, too. You miss a class. You know, when you don't know how to pronounce some words, we could question whether you went to school. Mm. You might be angry. You'd be like, there's nothing you can do to me. I'm not the one that says you don't go to nursery school. But the child that goes to nursery school usually shows different. I'm telling you now, so that as you are growing older and having children, you will plan to send your children to nursery school. Because it shows. <laughs> Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. You would think those comedians are doing <laughs> by your day. What's wrong with you? I don't know if you guys get what I'm saying. Yes, so there are things that from your childhood should have been an advantage for you. Mm. That being born again 
would leverage that exposure. So you got born again with a background that was abused, with a feeling of being small. Your parents couldn't do more to reassure you other than to chide you for getting low scores. Is this what your mates are getting? What is this compared to what are they? What, what is first? That person doesn't have two heads. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And before you knew what was happening, the place of God came into your life with the hope that God will help you pass your exams. Whereas your brain was enough to pass the exam. Yes, sir. You now start to use divinity to sponsor humanity on what humanity should have naturally done. So, I feel the misstep began there. Even the pastor preaching to you may have been guilty of the same thing. I'm not guilty of it too. <laughs> Let me just tell you clearly. Me, I'm not. Because from my childhood, I had known these things. I was always curious. Always asking those questions. Always curious. You would think I would ask any, any question. And I got born again early. So I had known, they helped me to understand that the life of God is, is for something different from just what human beings could do. Mm. And then we grew up getting to organizations, look for a job, go to NYC with our colleagues. You know what I'm saying? Yes, from NYC, you get your certificate, compassion. All of us look normal. How do we, at what point do we distinguish the believer from the so-called non-believer? They do their life, we do our life. They marry, we marry. They go to work, we go to work. Some of them even get some deals. They, so all, everybody's just doing it, and we're hoping to succeed. Don't tell me that it's only heaven that is your goal. That's not true. In fact, Scripture says, I wish above all things that thou mayest, do, thou, thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul, he said, I wish above all things. So don't confuse us. Don't make us look like as if we are being carnal for wanting some things carnal. The problem is not you having money. The problem is money having you. That has always been the problem. The Bible says he gave us all things freely. Freely. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 17. So God is not a God that is trying to cage us. So why did he give us his life? What is Christianity for? I'm going to deliver this tonight by the grace of God. Amen. Are we getting blessed already? Yes, sir. Why did he give us his life? He gave us his life among other things so that we can reproduce heaven on earth. We can reproduce. It's not so that we can escape to heaven. It's so that we can have heaven on earth. Somebody say heaven on earth. Heaven. Say probably say heaven on earth. Heaven. You know some people are experiencing hell on earth. Oh, yes, sir. Hey, I hope you know. Yes, some people are experiencing H-E-L-L on earth. As we speak, death looks like a better idea mm. than life. Some are in prisons. If you give them liberty today, they will not take it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because at least the prison is taking care of them. Yes, sir. Coming out, they wouldn't have any food to eat. They are more organized and responsive. They are more hopeful. They can even fight somebody to take care of them from the prisons. I'm not guessing. I'm telling you a true story. So, what, at what point do we truly need this life of God? What is it for? Now, the Bible says that if, um, if any man be in Christ, do you remember that scripture? Yes, a new, let's quote it together. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and 17. It says, and if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. So, anybody who is born again here, I want to say congratulations. I want to say you are blessed. And being blessed here is not to now feel like we're a cyclone. You know, we, we behave like as if we are born again now. Others are not. We are okay. They are not. If you look at your Jesus, 
after talking to us, he said, go into the world. Clearly, he told us. Those were his words. At least according to Mark 16. He said, go ye into all the world and then let people know about what you have experienced called the gospel. So, what he told us, among other things he said to us, was that because we are new creatures, we are in this world, but not of this world. Do you remember he said so? Let me bring that scripture up. We are in this world, but not of the world. Do you remember he said something like that? Yes. Sir. yes. So we are in this world. And what that means is that we're in this world system he came to die for. If you read in John chapter 3, verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world. world. That world God loved, <laughs> listen to me, was not as fine as this. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. The world God loved that he came to die for was not as civilized as this. Don't, don't make it look like I'm saying something that is bad. I've not said anything. What I just said just requires you to just think and you will agree that it's true. There was no, there were no machines like this. The first car ever known to in the world was in the 19th, I mean 18th century or something, Henry Ford. The guy still entered the 19th century. China had not become a world power. The world God came to die for that. The Bible says he's so loved. You know, we just used to make it look like God just loved the world. Big God, I just love the world. He loved the world. Whatever you will die for must be something very yes. important to you. Yes, Amen. 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 Look, if your perspective about God is not clear, it will affect how you worship him. Hmm. I, I get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. It will affect how you worship him. So, what did God love? God loved the world system. He loved the people. You know, sometimes people say, yeah, if it was only me in the world, God would have died. I am. <laughs> if it's only you, you might not come and die. You. <laughs> <laughs> because this God killed some people, sir. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If it was only me in the world, he would have died for me. Okay? If it's only you, I can tell you, God, see. You know, it sounds nice, and I understand what you're trying to say. But the relevance of your life is because of your purpose. Mm -hmm. If you don't meet purpose, it will not die nothing for you. The people that are alive is your purpose that makes you relevant to life. <laughs> that means life is a privilege. It's an opportunity to fulfill purpose. Yes. If you don't fulfill it, you're not... Your everyday living is for purpose. It's not for feeding. It's not for eating. It's not for ice cream. The only reason... Jesus did not live longer than three and a half was because he had fulfilled purpose. Hmm. Jesus, the savior of the world, lived for three and a half and it was okay. It was okay. If it is long life that we used to measure if Jesus Christ was successful, he failed. Because he died at three and three and a half. Why? His death was acceptable and is still acceptable to you and I because he fulfilled purpose. First John 3, 8, he said, for this purpose was the sort of man manifested. The reason I came has been achieved. I can go. I'm not suggesting you should die early, and I forbid you from dying early. Amen. But I'm saying, purpose is what makes your life relevant. The world that God came to die for is still the same world. He has not finished reaping his benefits from this world. Hmm. He knows that there's a world system. If you listen more to Jesus, you will realize that much of his message was not be born again. Mm. Hey, I hope you can handle this one. Oh, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Only one chapter, one book, five verses emphasize the need to be born again. Why? Why? The message of Jesus was the kingdom of God has come. The kingdom of God, do you know that's what it was saying almost yes, throughout? The kingdom of God has come. In fact, the message of being born again was a, a fallout of a curious Pharisee. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. It was not a main message. <laughs> that's why I said, calm down. Go and listen at home. 
Yeah, I told you before. Yes, sir. Does that mean you should not be born again? I'm, I'm very born again. I am born again. I am, I am be born again. <laughs> I want you to understand that it is important. Yes, sir. So don't think I'm undermining being born again. Yes, sir. I'm saying that was not the spirit of what Christ came to tell us. He came to tell us that the kingdom of God has come. Why did he come to tell us that? Because before that time, it was the kingdom of darkness that was going on. And he's trying to tell us that we are going to be having a wrestle and the kingdom of darkness. Let me show you. In Colossians chapter 1, from verse 12 to 14. Are we having audio for this recording? Yes, sir. Let's read. We're going to verse 14. Can we read it together? Yes, sir. Are you happy? Yes, sir. Someone says, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Let's read. It says, want to go, giving, giving thanks, thanks unto, unto the, the Father, Father which, which hath made us meet to be part of the inheritance of the saints in light. Read on. Verse 13. This is where we are going to take it and then 14. Who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had transferred us into the kingdom of his dear So we were under the power of darkness, and then he translated us when we gave our lives to him into the kingdom of his dear son. So there was a kingdom, he's translating us into another kingdom. There was a kingdom, he's taking us into another kingdom. There was a kingdom, he's bringing us into the kingdom of his dear son. So what does that mean? There is a kingdom of God's dear sons. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? Yes, sir. And there is the kingdom or the powers of darkness. That power of darkness is a system. It's an operational mode. And then the kingdom of his dear son is also an operational mode. Let me just beg you something. Eh? Try not to sleep. Yes, sir. Try. Eh? You know I can preach. I can turn this place into a hoop now. I will just preach, preach, preach. But let me teach as I'm led. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Let me teach this thing. Sometimes preaching does not bring out the sensibilities of the people. Mm -hmm. Teaching needs to allow people hear you and think and, you know, make decisions. Is that okay? Yes, sir. So please don't sleep. Eh? So it says, and had translated us. So you were changed. Can you give me amplified classics of this scripture? So there's a movement from your old personality or your old power into the kingdom of God's dear son. So he says in Amplified Classic, the father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control and the dominion of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of the son of his love. What that means is that we have moved from death to life. We have moved from darkness to light and we are in that current state where we are in the light now now in first john 3 1 first john 4 1 it says first john 3 1 says that you are of god little children first john 3 1 let, give it to me quickly let me just quickly refer to it and then go back and i want you to look for that scripture for me that says you are in the world but you are not of the world see what it says so first john see what an incredible quality of love the father has given shown bestowed on us that we should be permitted to be named and called and counted the children of god and so we are someone says so we are so, so we are. are the reason that the world does not know recognize acknowledge us is that it does not know recognize acknowledge him hmm. now the bible says that now are we the sons of god now are we the sons of god and it says verse two give me verse two verse two it says now are we the sons of god beloved we are even here and now God's children. It is not yet disclosed, made clear what we shall be hereafter. But we know that when He comes and is manifested, we shall, as God's children, resemble and be like Him, for we shall see Him just as He really is. Beloved, now are we the sons of God? Someone say, Now are we the sons of God? Now are we the sons of God. Let's say one more time. Say, Now am I a son of God? Now am I a son of God? Yes, I need you to say that because I want to draw something from there. That scripture I said you should check. Have you found what does it say? It says you are in this world, but they are not of the world. And that's what helps me achieve the next scripture. Um, Let me bring it up. Where was the scripture? Uh, at John 15, uh -huh, when it was before he got into prayers, he said, 
He said, if you belong to the world, the world will treat you with affection and will love you as its own. Are you listening, please? Yes, sir. Please, are you listening? Yes, sir. As its own. But because you are not of the world, no longer one with it, but I have chosen, selected you out of the world, the world hates, detests you. Did you see that? Yes, sir. If you were of the world, the world would love you its own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world... There's another one. It says you are in the world, but not of the world. Check that scripture for me. So, but this is also fair. But there's another one I really wish we got. Now, however, this is, it still achieves the same points I'm making. Now, what does this mean? That means there are things that you should be careful for. So, for example, the Bible says that friendship with the world is enmity against... I've never had that scripture. That means if the world is liking you too much, you are probably doing the things that God hates. Mm. Mm. He's talking about the system of the world. It says friendship with the world. And then it tells us that, um, that in, in this world, what exists in this world is lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Why is this important to this discussion? Because, listen, whether you know it or not, you are a victim of your convictions. Did you hear what I just said? Yes, that for choosing God, you make enmity against the world. Mm. That sounds simple, right? Yeah, for we're in a battle. Where is it? Aha. Uh -huh. Friendship with the world is enmity against God. See what it says. He said, you adulterers and adulteresses, you are not adulterers. Uh, he's talking to them. Know you not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Did you see that? Yes, sir. So there's a line drawn. There's a line drawn. And what that line means is that you should actively be involved in the favor of the kingdom of God you belong to. Some of us don't even understand what is going on. We just think that we're just good people. It's not about being good. It's about understanding you are enlisted into a kingdom. Okay, you are, you are bringing out the scriptures one by one, but uh -huh. Start from 15. For all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh. Okay, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Did you see what he's saying there? Yes, so he's talking about the world that Christ came to die for, extract some of us, and he said we should not love that world. Please, are you following what yes, I'm saying? Yes, so you must understand something, and I'm about to get into the system part of it now. That the system of the world knows its enemies. Mm. And because of you alone, an accident can close Lagos Ibadan Road. Yes. I want to know because of you alone, they can close embassy. Because you are a threat against that kingdom. Mm. Mm. And the system knows those that are for it Aye. and those that are against it. Mm. I'm not the one. Yes. Thank you. That's why I said you should go and watch that film. Because no film or illustration does it as good. So you just think, Amy, you, you are not an Erupelasson. You are an important agenda for the kingdom of God and against the kingdom of darkness. Do you know what Herod did? He killed all the children, two years, and all the children. Jesus did not have anybody to play with that was his mate. Peter was older than him. All of them. Two, children, two years and a half below, died. Anybody you saw with Jesus Christ was either 34 when Jesus was 32. Hey. Or 30. Because his mates were not around. Why? Because one came. And that one has produced many of himself in us now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are the one thinking they don't know you. And that's what I'm trying to make you alive to now. Paul was walking on the streets. A girl started shouting, These are the men that bring salvation to the world. These are the men that. They marked Paul. Paul did not talk. 
Day two, Paul did not talk. Day three, Paul said, will you keep... Was it not supposed to be a testimony? Was he lying? The demon was not lying. <laughs> but she was trying to turn the world against him that these are the people making you lose money. <laughs> Let me tell you something. In that your office, it's not your boss that is the issue. Yes, sir. The Bible says that we're not fighting against flesh and blood. Yes, sir. We're fighting against a system that at your appearance, they know you're a Christian without introducing yourself. You use dreadlocks to cover up. They say, we know you. You put nose ring and stud. They say, we mark you. We mark you. They'll behave like as though you are together. No problem, no problem. Come inside, come in. So for your sake alone, some things will not work. If you are not system conscious, you will think it's everybody. At the same time, you must know when it is not the system working against you. That's why I say you must have the knowledge of the two from the beginning. <laughs> Are you listening? Yes, sir. So you're stepping out. Bam! Oh, that system, Ray. You are, you are thinking your boss is your enemy. Your boss is not your enemy. Yes, sir. He's just an agency of his own system. Mm. Yes, sir. Mm. Agent. Mm. Agent. Mm. And he can be deployed at any point in time. Yes, sir. The same boss that just greeted you, turn back, has a rifle on your head. We must understand we are dealing with systems. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, sir. We are dealing with systems. It's a systemic thing. It's not a natural thing. Now, what are the systems? There's a system of God that we belong to, and then there's a system of the world that exists. David was a man that though lived in the Old Testament, literally experienced the New Testament graces. And his life in 1 Samuel 18 is worthy of note. At some point, in fact, from that 17 to 18, 19, at some point, David entered into the camp of the Philistines. The Bible says when he got there, David started to act mad. How many of us know that story? <laughs> I know the real Bible reached there. <laughs> The Bible says David started to act mad. He started to do like a like epilepsy. Like a you, you didn't read it. Ah. It's there now. Check it out. Give it to me. I think it's in chapter 18, if I'm not mistaken. He said he was to confuse them that he's not David. Don't forget that it was Goliath of Philistine. Mm. So he was in the camp of the one he killed. But he acted wisely. Because he knew it's a system thing. That if they get me in this system, the counsel of God, though the counsel of God, will not prosper. Samuel wanted to ordain David. God told him, go there and go and ordain David. Ah, he said, if I go, Saul will kill me. God told him, Go. Say you want to do sacrifice. <laughs> is it not God? Is it not God Almighty? Just, just do like this. He's not the one that anointed David. Just do like this. This was Saul, Samuel. That, <laughs> you know that Russian go <laughs> by the innermost riches. <laughs> You are, you are getting the point. Is it not God? Oh God, God said, go there. Tell him you want to do sacrifice. <laughs> In the world of men, men are gods. <laughs> See, and he, changed, and he changed his behavior before them. And fed himself mad. In their hands. And scrabbled on the doors of the gate and let his feet to fall down upon his beards. David. When they went, oh, Baradi. The Lord is, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall know what. You, Mumu Christian, that does not understand system. Eddie Bazoos of life. 
You just come. I come in the name of the Lord. They say, Catch up. Catch up. Catch up. Catch up. Catch up. Yet, there's a time for everything. Yes, sir. I guys get what I'm saying. Yes, there's a time for it. Samuel, that ordained Saul, said, if Saul catch me, we kill you. Who was he telling? God. I don't know whether you understand today. God! Not, not uh, prophet. After, the Bible says, none of Samuel's words fell to the ground. Not one. Say, uh, my Lord, if I go, Saul go, so go do it. No. So go. He knew, he knew the limits of his power. Yeah. And God did not say, "Don't worry, I will come down like a cloud and stand in between you and Saul." No. He said, "Just him. Your human intelligence should help you there." God did not introduce divinity to help humanity there. Want you to know that without this clear understanding, you will not know when to switch your divinity or gain your humanity. Mm -hmm. so I said, look at it. And Samuel said, How can I go? Oh, if so, hear it. He will kill. And the Lord said, Take an effort with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice. God taught him what to say again. Mwarubani. <laughs> No problem. I came to. He said, Take it and ever. And I've come to lead you in worship of God with this effort as a sacrifice. He came to dedicate another person's life. What am I saying? There's an intelligence for Christian living. Are you listening to what I'm saying? There's an intelligence for glorious life. Otherwise, your kingdom will never manifest. Mm. Your glory will never see the light of day. Simply because of your simplistic thinking. You must think like systems. You know, this was what I was saying. Was it on Saturday or on Wednesday? Do you know that people don't think in terms of systems? For example, when you are eating, some of us just think that it's just the mouth that is everything. Mm. Don't you realize that when it goes through the mouth, it touches the tongue, the tongue goes down through the throat, rolls down. That whole process is called digestive system. Some of us will just think it's mouth alone. It's not mouth alone. There are many complex yes, things sir. interwoven into the success of each food you eat. That if one system gives way, there's a breakdown. Yes. Hey. Yes. Yes, sir. So you must understand the world you are living in. You must understand the dynamics of the warfare. Yes, sir. You must know when it is time to pray versus when it's time to ignore. Hmm. Yes, you must know when it's time to shewere <laughs> and when it's time to shew gentle. One day I came to this bus stop. I think someone was traveling and the person was tra trying the man of God. I took somebody along with me. The person did not believe it was his pastor. I was manifesting. <laughs> There's a time for everything. Yes, sir. I was traveling one day to go and preach. Oh, to go and preach. One crazy guy was trying God's servant on, on the Lagos Battle Road. The person I took with me was my music guy. Oh. I said, you should come and sing. There. Oh. <laughs> when he saw his And I was in Suto. I was, no, I, I was driving. It's not because I'm trying to prove that I'm a rascal. No, no. I'm the gentleman. Praise God. Yes, but there's a time for everything. Yes, sir. There was a time my Lord and Master carried cordial and was flogging people out. He was not flogging them. Please go out. People, you have turned the house of God to a house of uh, thieves. Don't do this. Shoo. Shoo. <laughs> he assumed authority of parenthood over them. Yes, Collected cordial. Yes, <laughs> Hallelujah. System thinking. Let's quickly close with one scripture and then we'll continue. I told you I'll continue. Are you getting blessed? Yeah? First John chapter 5. First John 4. Let's go to 4. The believer needs to know how to win in Christ. Yes, sir. Your mumu don't do. You need to understand what to do per time. I'm only showing you the dynamics of the battle, how some things are here. 
you know. The Bible says, before we read that first John 4:4, 4, 4, let's read one scripture. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. It says, Do not be righteous over much. Why destroy yourself before your time? Then it now says, Do not be foolish over much. Look at it. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 16 and 17. Quickly, so that I'll come back here. We'll come back here. See what it says. People of God, do you have it? Can we all read it? Did you see that? Both of them will lead to death. Both of them will lead to destruction. Over righteousness and over wickedness. It's an invitation to balance. You must know the balance. If you are too simplistic, you will die before your time. If you take it, you will destroy yourself before your time. Let me show you one more before I go to First John 4. Are you, are you getting blessed here? This yes, sir. Ah! yes, sir. In Proverbs chapter 26, let's look at Proverbs chapter 25. Let's 25 verse 4 and 5. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for all trans. Um, that's, it should be 26, I think. 26 verse 4 and 5. 26, 4 and 5. Just next chapter, 4 and 5. It's a popular scripture. I'll just read it quickly, then we'll go to First John 4. Uh -huh. See what it says. In a similar spirit to, are you seeing what it's saying? Yeah. Let's read it together. One to go. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Next verse. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. He will be telling himself, I'm intelligent. I use him. He says, so to stop him from thinking like that, answer him according to his folly. You are a fool. I will show you you are a fool. I will show you the mother of foolishness. Shake your foolishness. Foolishness pro max. I will show you. Then the other one says, don't answer him according to his folly. Otherwise, they will not tell the difference. The difference with that most times is that there are other people that will judge your case. In the first one, you will look like him because there are people watching you. In the second one, in private, you deal with him with his foolishness. Yes, sir. You think you are crazy? Yes, I'll show you. <laughs> you gonna see crazy. Just can't sit down. Let's go there. First John four four. First John four. Are we getting blessed? Yes, sir. Yes. So you need to walk with like though you know you are fighting a system. Yes, sir. For you not to be alive on that knowledge is, listen. You have to believe all things are for you and all things are against you at the same time. All things are for you and all things are against you at the same time. I call it system thinking. Let's go. Want to go. You have God, little children, and have overcome them. I want you to see the language, them. Then he says, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This scripture sounds very profound and without any fear of controversy, refers to Antichrist and calls it the spirit of the Antichrist. It says it's already in the world. If you read it earlier on, just for context, can we start from verse 1? So that anybody talking to you, you will know how to tell them that my man of God taught me well. Amen. Amen. So that you don't sound like you are a novice. All right? So let's start. So context, just for context, why we're going here. Beloved, believe not every spirit. You see, he's talking about spirit here. Hallelujah. Praise God. He's not talking about person. He's talking about spirit. But these spirits are expressed through persons. So he's saying, he would have said, don't believe every person. He said, don't believe every spirit. So as far as it's concerned, it's spirit-to-spirit -spirit conversation. Mm. He now says, but try the spirits. 
test run the spirit, acid test. Hi. You know, there should be an acid test. Whether they are of God. So he said, check it. Whether the, 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 the spirit that is talking, the message talking, the preacher talking, or the discourse, anywhere, is it of God? So we should check. Then he says, because many false prophets are already gone into the world. Are you seeing what he's saying? Yes, so he's talking about false prophets. As it were, spiritual false prophets. Are you getting what I'm saying yes, here? Sir. It now says, let's go on. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. This is, this is simple as it test. Every spirit that confessed that Jesus is come in the flesh is of God. What a very simple as it test. It's too simple to... to <laughs> I, I, it takes a preacher to confuse you. <laughs> this is too clear. Yes. Anybody that undermines that Jesus Christ came in the flesh is not of God. I thought it was right to say, Jesus came. You do know who Jesus is? Is God. That Jesus is not your... He said, no. That spirit that undermines the coming of Jesus Christ as not in the flesh is that antichrist spirit. Hmm. Simple as it tests. No, they add to Bible. The Bible can defend itself. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What does that mean? For you to say Jesus Christ came in the flesh has a lot of implications. Number one among them means that Jesus Christ too was tempted like you are tempted. Mm. Yes, without sin. That means we can live a life without sin. Mm. That is coming in the flesh indicts us. <laughs> it's not as if it, it glorifies him. It shows what we can do. Mm. It comes to point to us, not necessarily to him. Mm. <laughs> That's why he said, if you are thinking that you are, you are underrating human nature, underrating what god has done in human being and probably overrating god's relevance to it jesus to saw babe yet stayed focused jesus too went to toilet he was tempted in every way such as he was hungry he saw no no he was seeing stones like bread <laughs> Yes, for somebody to be seeing stones like bread, they say turn these stones to bread. It's, it's, not, it's a thought. Satan came to tell him that, oh God, look at this thing, you can do it now, you are the son of God. And he said, ah, no, no. No, 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 I will not do that, I will not do that. Say, man shall not live by bread alone, no. He struggled, it, if it was not so, it was not a temptation. Hmm. Because you're only tempted by the things that you like. Mm. And he likes bread and fish a lot. A lot. After resurrection, he still came. He said, please, bread and fish. Of all the food, he said, I'm the bread of life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So what am I trying to bring to your attention? The way to know the spirit of God is that you recognize that whatever Jesus Christ did in the flesh, we can do as well. Mm. Mm. Let's go. Next verse. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. That means every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus Christ coming in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist. So the spirit we are talking about here is anti. Christ. So Christ is here. Anti is there. Anything opposing. Christ. Are we together, please? Yes, sir. It says, and this is very antichrist. So the antichrist spirit is Islam. Hmm. We don't believe in your Jesus. He doesn't agree that he came in the flesh. He doesn't agree that he's the son of God. Do you get that? Yes. He believes the prophet, but he's not the son of God. Hmm. Anybody that comes and does not acknowledge the profiling of jesus is not of god so that antichrist spirit exists please do you get what i'm saying here? and now look how it says whereof you have heard that it should come you've had an antichrist should come now have you not heard it before yes, but most of us are waiting for an antichrist to rise up from america like donald trump mm. he's not like that 
<laughs> it's the film you watched, <laughs> left behind. That's the problem. Look at it. it says, and even now already is it in the world <laughs> since that time. Before they carried the first camera, it was already in the world. What is this spirit? And that's what I'm trying to point to you. So it's a spiritual conversation. Is like, this is what I'm saying. Yes, sir. I'm about to wrap up now. But I hope it has been a blessing. Yes, sir. Ah, I'll stop it somewhere and then we'll continue. Let me just wrap up. Look at it. it says, so this is where it says. It now says in verse 4. Give me the verse 4. Ye little children, and have overcome them. The them there is the spirit of Antichrist. Please, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Do you understand how I arrived here? Yes, sir. And so that you don't, I, I'm, I'm not just people and scripture, I just try to explain my point. No. We small, small, we break and down, reach here. Uh -huh. Say, so why? Why did you overcome? Or how? Or why did you overcome? He said, because. You know, because answers the question, yes, sir. why? Because the reason why you overcome them, that is the spirit of Antichrist, is that greater is that greater is he that is in you than he in the world so it's a contest of greatness there is some tussling they have measured that this one is greater than this one it's a spiritual fact that we have checked what is in you and we have measured that it is greater than the plenty of them in the world. Hmm. So the world has its own system, but the system that is in you is greater than the system that the world can come against. Hmm. And the system of the world is a system of the Antichrist. It's coming against the Christ that is in you. Hmm. Christ in you, the hope oh, of glory. glory. That Christ is what is greater than the system that is in the world. How does this system operate? The system comes to fight the Christ in you. And I'm talking about fighting you in places where you would not support this is the Antichrist. The day you chose to do that money thrift is the day it closed. That's part of fighting the money you needed, your cargo, your goods, mm, everything chop. It's fighting Christ in you. Your rest is lost because you don't have the finances. You mm. borrowed the money. Master, alas, it was borrowed. It's fighting the Christ in you. You got into a relationship that should have worked out right. Just before the end of it, something terminated it. It's fighting the Christ in you. Because that is the hope of your glory. The day you started your business is the day road started going bad. You did not believe it's because of you the road went bad. You think it's just that Lagos roads. Mm. The system is fighting you. The moment you wanted to marry the wife of your youth is the day somebody else came to come and show her greater value of money. Mm. Christ in you. <laughs> Health, Inko. Mm. Education system. Transportation system. Mm. It's all over you may not believe it, but Nigeria has a grasshopper system. Walk like an ant and eat like an elephant. I mean, walk like an elephant and eat like an ant. It's different abroad, but it's also pressing everybody. It's everywhere in the world. We are fighting systems, folks. And you need to think in terms of systems, not just in terms of an isolated activity. So our spiritual conversations our impact in this society is against a system that wants to render us obsolete. If we continue to think in this fetish gathering like as if we are together, again, very good, but that's not the purpose. There is a greater good we must do humanity. That our production of righteousness silences the power of that system. I... That what comes out of our life is value that cannot be undermined. That the system of entertainment, the system of finances, finance, there's a financial system. Yes, sir. That marks that you borrowed money and is hoping you will never recover. It took me a while to understand this also. But I'm telling you, sir, that as you put money inside that business, the system marks your money. 
That's why when you don't do your money the way God asks you to do it, you will struggle. Oh. Hey. There are lessons to learn. Hey. Your, you think your money mixes everywhere. Have you not seen where, if you know spiritual things well or some films, you see how they will mark somebody's money. No matter how much you mix it, they will pick your money out. Mm. Your money is not their money. Hmm. I can't teach everything in one night. I want you to go back home and take it in. Hallelujah. Let's just excel in tongues. Let's just excel in tongues. Let's just excel in tongues.